Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. What a blessing to be here this morning again. Something that we should never take for granted. We should always take advantage of the opportunities the Lord has given us to come and worship Him in spirit and truth. Amen. So without further ado today, I ask you to turn back, if you will. Your Bibles may already and still be there. To Jeremiah chapter 29 this morning. Jeremiah chapter 29. And you'll hear me say this a couple more times, I'm sure today. But today is marks the final Sunday of 2020. And it's something, guys, that uh, uh, we've all, uh, uh, we all look at. We always look at the last, I do. I, I have a tendency to look at the last Sunday, um, you know, the last sermon of the year. And, and we kind of do a, a year in review. We look back and see where we've been and, and more along the line of where we have, uh, where we're going. Amen. Um, I, I personally don't believe uh, let me go ahead and say this on the onset today, and I'm not trying to damper the spirit by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but guys, but if you're looking back at 2020 and dreading it and look back at it and say, man, what a miserable, horrible year, you miss the point, amen? You miss the point. Uh, God has a purpose. God has a reason, and I've heard people say, as a matter of fact, I was reading a, a quote that someone had, had put out to, uh, here just a, a week or so ago, and, and uh, they had said that uh, you know, the, all the troubles and all the things that they've dealt with and the problems and the struggles that they've had in all these a number of years, not just this year. Uh, then the, the very next thing was, and it's not about religion, so don't come at me with that. What they did is they, all they want to do is rant. They didn't want any solution, no help whatsoever. And then they put their guard up and say, don't give me your Jesus is what they said. At the end of the day, guys, uh, nothing happens on this planet nor in all, any part of creation without God's allowance, period. Amen? Now, that doesn't mean everything's going to be great and wonderful. What it does mean is that we know that God is in control one way or another. Amen? So in Jeremiah 29, let's reread these verses that we've already read. We'll have a quick word of prayer. And we're going to get into this this morning. And I hope and pray that this will bring to light to you today a wonderful year in review. The Bible says in verse 1, Jeremiah 29, it says, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the residue of the elders, which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Jeconiah the king, and the queen, and the eunuchs, and the princes of Judah in Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. There's a, an important role right there that you find in verse 2. By the hand of Elishai, uh, Elishai the son of Shaphan, and Jemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and begot sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughter, daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your, dreamers, or your dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you, and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I have, that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart." And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity and will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Father in heaven, I pray. And Lord, this day, this final Sunday of 2020, I ask of you to please bear witness upon our souls 
A message, a lesson that we need to learn so greatly today. Father in heaven, I pray for a spirit of comfort. I pray, dear God, for a sweet release, dear Lord, from maybe the bondage and the bounds that have been brought into our hearts and our minds. And my focus on that which is on the horizontal today. Let us get our eyes on the vertical. Heavenly Father, I love you and I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for the mercy and the grace that you've had in my life. So undeserving I am. I simply ask you to please continue today with us. Carry us forward and guide us in the way that will bring honor and glory and praise to the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we ask all of these things. Amen. And amen. Well, but I want to bring a thought to you today, a simple thought of seek peace. Seek peace. Now, in all fairness, guys, I think anyone in their right mind, and I'm emphasizing the word right mind, and I may be using that a little bit loosely, they desire to have peace in their life. I personally believe that uh, yes, there are hyper-negative people in this world that seek and to drive nothing but controversy and, 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 and confrontation and debate and argument in their days, and it's because the root line elements of their own lives are so inherently negative that everyone around them, they want to have the same outlook they do, a negative, pessimistic view. They call themselves realists. They're not realists, they're pessimists. But I think anyone in their right mind, minus a, a sadist, would like to have peace in their life. I mean, even, I would honestly believe that even with the sadists who are not in their right mind, but even the sadists would wake up one morning and say, man, I wish I didn't have this urge. I wish I could just have some peace in my life. My friend, we're living in unprecedented times today as we navigate through life-threatening and economic, economic shaking struggles, which we're facing because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Our world has been through many, many catastrophes in the past. This is not the first one. And unless the Lord comes back tomorrow, it's not going to be the last. And even if he does come back right now in the air, there's going to be seven years that's going to make this, this thing, this pandemic is going to look like a sneeze compared to what God has planned for the seven-year tribulation period. By the way, if you're a born-again believer, you won't be part of. Don't bow that lie that we're going through it. Matter of fact, in 1138 AD, there's known as the Aleppo earthquake. That was a massive tragedy, a worldwide devastating event that occurred. 2004, you guys probably remember the Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami that made all the news. I mean, it was devastating, it was. And, I, and the thing about that tsunami that amazed me is that everyone could see it coming on the horizon, and guess what? There was nothing, nothing they could do. I remember distinctively the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Our company, we, I had sent one of my technicians who actually was originally from Haiti, Jean Boulaire. I sent him down there to help with the repairs. Our company worked in shifts going down to uh, not only to work with physical repairs of buildings, but to treat amputees because the amputee population had, had skyrocketed so greatly. How many of you remember the 2014 to 2016 uh, West Africa Ebola outbreak? I remember that. 2015 Nepal earthquake, 7.9 on the Richter scale. It's also, we also can look back in history, known as the, uh, the Antonine Plague, also known as the Plague of Galen. It was an ancient pandemic that affected Asia Minor, Egypt, Greece, and Italy. And it was thought to have been similar to smallpox or, or the measles. But the people, uh, it's still unknown. The etymology, it's, it's an idiopathic disease that went through people. No one knows where it came from. It's an unknown disease. It's believed it was uh, to be brought back by the Roman soldiers returning from Mesopotamia in 165 AD, second century, mind you. And unknowingly, they had spread the disease, which would end up killing over 5 million people, decimating the Roman army. Second century. From 1346 to 1353, there was an outbreak of, of the plague, the bubonic plague, that ravaged Europe and Africa and Asia with an estimated death toll of 75 to 200 million people. Guys, 
This is not the first pandemic and problem that we've had in our life today. Disasters and diseases and wars impact various countries. But what we're dealing with today is a little bit different. Not worse, not better. But I would say it's highlighted more. Wouldn't you agree? News travels much faster today, whether it's right news or wrong news. There's a mixture between a a pandemic and propaganda and popularity and power plays. And it's all mixed up in our daily lives. So today being the final Sunday morning of 2020, I want us to look back over the past 12 months. I want us to go back and, number one, I want us to evaluate what we have done. How did we adapt? What changes did we have come into our lives in the past year? And how did we adapt to them? And not only adapt, did we progress forward? Did we push on in the past 12 months? Did we look at Jesus? And when they saw at John 20, 20, Honestly, I remember the opening sermon of 2020, remember, like it was yesterday, and I remember the closing sermon of 2019. Our theme that we had for this year, the John 2020 theme, uh, uh, you know, the 2020 vision, if you will. Uh, Guys, I could not wait for it to get it. This this theme was 10 plus years in the making, and it wouldn't be me alone. I'm sure every preacher on the planet probably looked and, and could not wait till 2020 got here so he could use this theme. And boy, did it not work out like we thought. Amen. I mean, my goodness. I couldn't wait to get to 2020 just because of that theme. And when we got here, it opened up with fires and storms and windstorms and floods. And then all of a sudden, a virus came, and we're still dealing with it today. So what, what, is, what does that have to do with the verses we've read? What does that have to do with, say, verse 11, where the Lord says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil. I mean, what does it have to do? Let's, let's go back and let's look at a few of these verses here just by way of introduction this morning. And let's look starting with verse 5. Notice what he says. On the backside of showing all of these people that have been already taken captive, the Lord says, build ye houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. You know what the Lord says? He says, build houses, plant gardens, eat. In other words, you know what he's telling his people? Live, man. Live your life. Do what you have always done. You've always built houses. You've always lived in them. You've always planted gardens. You've always eaten the fruit thereof. Keep doing it. Look in verse 6 with me. He says, Take ye wives, and begat sons and daughters, and and take wives for your sons, and give your uh, daughters to husbands, uh, that you may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. I mean, the Lord's saying, Mary, have kids, have great-grandkids, have great-great-grandkids, populate. You know, what, you know what the Lord is saying? In the midst of this captivity, in the midst of them being removed, in the midst of all the things that have happened, he says, live, man, move on, he says. Look in the first part of verse 7. He says, and seek the peace of the city. What? You're taking me captive into a pagan city. You're taking me into Babylon. And you said, seek the peace of the city. Hang on. I can understand you telling us to build houses and live in them. I can understand, you know, because we've got to live somewhere. I can understand you, you telling us to plant gardens and eat the fruit there because, we, you know, we've got we to gotta eat food. And I can even understand you telling us to marry and give our kids to marry because we've got we to gotta keep populating the, uh, the world. But man, you want me to do this in peace? Lord, don't you understand that we're captives? I mean, Lord, don't you understand that we're taken from our homeland? Don't you understand that we are, we are being ruled by a pagan king? Don't you understand that, that this king that knows you not? Or does he? I mean, you may be sitting there today and listening to this. And you may be saying, but preacher, you just don't understand. I got to wear a mask. I got to wear a mask all the time. I got to wear, I mean, it, it fogs my glasses up. I'll be the first one to tell you I hate wearing a mask. I'll be the first one. To, I can't stand it. I have sinus issues. I got a deviated septum. My nose, the second I put it on, man, my nose starts running. It's uncomfortable. I don't breathe well. If I got my glasses on, it fogs up. My glasses up here, I can't even see your face very well. I can see you. I'm just kidding. 
Oh, preacher, you don't understand. I can't go to the pub. Well, good. I'll leave that one there. Well, preacher, you don't understand. I've got to wash my hands a hundred times a day. Very good. Amen. If we can get everybody on the, on the side of spraying dead oil on themselves, I'll be happy. Pandemic or no pandemic. Amen. It made me laugh. Now, Carol had given me some books for Christmas. I got a message from her yesterday or Christmas Day. She said, I sprayed the books down, PJ. <laughs> oh, my guys, I was like that before the COVID-19. My fitness center is closed, preacher. You don't understand. I can't go get my groove on. Yeah? I mean, I can't go get my nails done and my hair cut. Seek peace, man. The Lord had taken the population of these people and taken them into captivity. He had taken them into a land uh, by his servant, Nebuchadnezzar, mind you, is what he said. But Nebuchadnezzar was only an instrument Used by the hand of God. If you notice how many times the word I was in uh, those verses that we've read in verse, uh, chapter 29, verses 1 through 14, of which I have done, I have taken captive, I have sent, I have removed, and I will bring you back. He says, seek the peace of the city, whether I have caused you to be carried away. Seek peace. You got to wear a mask, can't go to the pub, can't go to the gym, can't get your nails done, can't get your hair cut. Seek peace, my friend. Seek peace in where we are today. So let's read the rest of it. Let's read verse 7 once more and, and let's notice, let's, let's look at a few things. Verse 7 says, And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Amen. Jeremiah is writing here, but it's being recorded, I should say. He's, he's preaching uh, what we're reading here in verse uh, 29. He writes this letter, is what this is, but he's preaching this thing, if you will. And he, he writes this thing in the year eight, uh, BC 56, uh, uh, 586 BC, not 56, 586 BC. This is during or right after. I personally believe it's right after the final siege of Jerusalem. Because we notice how the carpenters, the smiths, and all these different people, Jehoiakim, all of them, the eunuchs, all of them, the queen, they were already taken away. He writes this thing during this, or at the end of this final siege on Jerusalem, when the majority of the remaining residents were taken into captivity. Jerusalem was a ghost town. There was nothing but vagabonds left. I mean, it was just desolate looking, empty looking. The temple, all the, the temple uh, instruments were removed from there. It was a hollow shell, nothing but a building. So I want you to think about it like this with me. Just bear with me this morning. Think about it like this. The first series of captives were taken in 606 B.C. The second in 597 and the final 586. So for 20 years, these Jews have seen nothing but being uprooted, losing their home, their family, their finances, their security. Those who were not taken in the first two seeds lived every single day wondering if today would be my day. Would today be the day that we're taken? Imagine living like that, guys. Imagine living in every day that you woke up wanting to have some type of peace in your life and you wondered... Are they going to knock my door today? Are they going to knock my door down and say, come on, it's your turn to go and be captive? Man, things were not seemingly going great in their eyes. Things were frightful, and yet the Lord is telling them to seek the peace of the city, a pagan land. Why? But he says, for I know. For I know the thoughts and I, uh, that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Uh, we, we've used this verse in times past when we preach it on the will of God. That verse there is a, is a proven point of God's determined will. His will that is going to happen whether we like it or not. At the time, at a time when the whole world today has something in common, the world is trying to fight a deadly virus, economies are working to survive, families are seeking comfort, and politics are taking the front and center position to try to control the populace. Oh, we're not being taken captive out of our homeland. 
We're not being removed from our homes, at least not yet. We're not, hey, praise God that this third lockdown, we're still in the house of the Lord, amen? And I thank you for being here today, for taking advantage of that, amen? Because you should never take the house of God for granted, because one day, there'll be chains on the door. But we are losing loved ones. We are losing time together. We have losses in other ways. So, beloved, there are struggles today. We have struggles in these times. The Jews were told to seek peace in the midst of a day when they were taken captive. The Jews were told to live their life as they always had. The Jews were told to be fruitful. So as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, what are we to do in a day and age of lockdown and losses? Now, let me go ahead and say this by disclaimer. Doctrinally, this verse has absolutely positively nothing to do with us today. The verse that what we're reading here is strictly for the nation of Israel. There is zero doctrine that applies to us in these verses, none. But there is a practical application, a spiritual one, if you will. And it should give us hope. It should become a spiritual security blanket in hard times of our life. While we understand that God is the ultimate giver of hope, we have to understand the context of the cherished verse that we're looking at. Jeremiah prophesied to the Israelites in the southern kingdom of, of Judah before they were taken captive uh, in 586 B.C. We understand that that was when his prophecy started. It started when he was roughly a 14-year-old boy. He was a young man, and he prophesied all these years, and, and 20 years in the making, we find, 20-plus uh, years in the making. Now he's, he's writing this. He's writing this letter, and he's prophesying as he sees the decimation of the nation of Israel continue to be moved and moved and moved. In Jeremiah 27, he prophesied that they would serve this king. Not only would he serve this king, but they would serve his son and his grandson, and that everything would be under God's control. Jeremiah 27, verses 6 and 8 says, And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Look at these next two words. My servant. My servant. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all the nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of, this land, of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and the kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Fairly clear. Whose hand? Who, who, Nebuchadnezzar was a puppet of God. Let me look at verse 9 of the same chapter, Jeremiah 27. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor your diviners, nor your dreamers, nor your enchanters, nor your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. He's saying, don't listen to them. You're going to make a mistake. Verse 9 is a very interesting, interesting verse because Jeremiah is preaching the word of God. And he was, uh, he was asked to do so in some of the most unorthodox ways. We've had this conversation on our Tuesday morning Bible study and how he was, he was asked to preach this way and that way. He got chucked in jail and he still preached in jail. He was forgotten about for a year and a half while in that jail and the city began to lose. Number. I mean, the things that Jeremiah went through, my soul. Yet in this verse 9, the, the Lord says, hearken not to your prophets. Don't listen to your diviners. Don't listen to your dreamers, your enchanters, your sorcerers. We'll come back to this verse here later, which tell you not to serve the king. And I want you to stop there for just a second. The situation that Israel was in, the situation the Israelites were in, they brought upon themselves. The situation that was going on was done and allowed by the hand of God. And yes, it was a pagan king who God used to bring this upon his people in his timing and his way. And he says, don't listen to your enchanters. Here's the kicker, guys. They had all turned their back on God. You see, Jeremiah was God's man preaching, preaching God's word. 
But they were listening to their diviners, sorcerers. Israel had turned their back on God. It's one of the reasons this was happening. 490 years, they forsook the sabbatical year. They turned their back on obeying God. That's why I'm amazed when people say that, uh, you know, well, you mean to tell me God will use a pagan king to judge his people? Let me tell you something. You turn your back on God, you're not his people, or at least you're not serving him in the way you should. Don't you be surprised. Don't you be moved. Don't you be shaken. When God brings or allows something into our life today, I don't know, like a little pandemic that's going on. Now, I know I'll probably get hate mail for what I just said. We want to think God is all about the blessings. And he is. We want to think God, it would never allow something in this world. Or you've got the other side of the coin is, well, if God's true, why does he allow this, 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 and this? I I can't tell you the mind of God. I got the word of God. I can look back on what he did to his people in the nation of Israel, and I know why he did it. Those 70 years that had to be accomplished was because for 70 sabbatical years, Israel forsook God. Every seventh year, the land was to lie desolate. They wasn't supposed to work the land. In other words, they worked six years, years, and they, they took off an entire year and let the land lie desolate, and yet they did not. The seventh year, they worked. The 14th year, they worked. The 21st year, they worked. The 28th year, and on and on and on. For 490 years, their heart was not 100% serving God. Therefore, the 70 literal years, they paid back under the ruling and the captivity of Babylon. But the 490 years, they still owed. 483, they fulfilled thus far, and that's for another, another day, another time. They had turned their back, and they started listening to their own prophets. Prophets that would tell them things that they wanted to hear. They started listening to their own diviners and their sorcerers. You know the word sorcerer? The word sorcery comes from the, word, the Greek word pharmakeia. It's the same word that we get pharmaceuticals. Let that sink in for just a while. They were listening to their enchanters, their dreamers. Can I say this to you this morning, guys? In the midst of of what a pseudo-serving God, Israel was dealing with false prophets. Um, False prophets. Look there in Jeremiah back in, look over in Jeremiah 28 with me. So you're going to go from Jeremiah 27. Go to Jeremiah 28. And, uh, you know, the the very next chapter, we find a a false prophet by the name of Hananiah who told the people that God would free them and restore them, uh, restore everything back unto them in two years. Sounds like a date setter to me now, doesn't it? Jeremiah 28 in verse 1 says, And it came to pass in the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, uh, that Hananiah, the son of Azur, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priest and all the people, saying... Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. Now here you've got a guy who's no more of God. He is a false prophet. And he's telling them, listen, don't you listen to what everybody says. Don't you serve that king. Whereas God said, you're going to serve the king. If you don't serve the king, I'm going to kill you a pestilence. And then I said, oh, it'll be over with in two years. How many times have we over the last multi, uh, uh, multiple decades heard somebody come up on the scene? And, and, and I mean, good men fleeing the foundations of faith, forsaking the doctrine of eternal security, forsaking the biblical doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture, forsaking salvation by grace through faith, forsaken free will. I mean, the list could go on. And these men stand in front of their whiteboard and they start drawing all these conclusions of the things that are happening today. And they do this little mathematics and they do this line and they say, man, God's going to come back. He's going to come back on such and such date. I mean, just like Hananiah, guys, they are liars today, men who are perverting the scriptures and causing confusion and fear amongst the people. Can I tell you this this morning? 
We don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back in the air. No one does. We do know it's going to be before the tribulation period. Amen. Jeremiah challenged Hananiah because of his lies. Look down in verse 15 and 17 of the same chapter there in chapter 28. In verse 15 through 17, he says, Then said uh, the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth this year. Thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah, the prophet, died the same year in the seventh month. I'm going to stop there just for a second. What rebellion was Hananiah teaching? He was teaching them not to follow the word of God. Does that sound awful familiar? Genesis chapter 3. When the serpent spoke to Eve and said... uh, Yea, hath God said, Thou mayest freely eat of all the trees that are in the midst of the garden? Oh, question mark. Well, yeah, that's what he said, but God continued on saying, Except that one. (laughs) Don't eat of this one here. Oh, but the Lord said you can eat of all of them, but that. Oh, but let me see. The devil puts a question mark. The devil puts a full stop. The devil puts the devil puts something there when God only puts a comma or a conjunction. You look back. At your false prophets of this day and yesterday, and they'll all be rooted and grounded in questioning the validity and the inspiration of the Word of God. Every one of them. From those that have fled, I know a good man right now, a great man, was a good man, I should say. We supported him here. Church planner. Now he questions eternal security. Now it's a works-based religion. He's ca- now he's uh, called to cast out devils. And what's going to happen, just like it did with the seven sons of Sceva, one of them devils is going to jump on him, and he's going, to be, he's going to flee out naked and wounded. Amen. He's going, to be exposed to, he's going to be exposed for the false liar that he is. Well, we have it today. We have it in the world today. Men are in pulpits right now teaching a lie, teaching things they ought not. Beloved, can I say this to you this morning? You should be so rock solid set in this holy scriptures right here that I don't care if the sun turned to black darkness and the moon turned to blood and frogs started crawling in this building, okay? And COVID wiped out a fourth of the population. If that happened today, you should be so rock solid set to still know that the church is not going through the tribulation period, period. And I'm just using that as an example because that's what false, that's what's happened. These men, and I'm going to get into it in point number two so we can, and then jump into point three so we'll be done. These men have forsaken the foundations. See, what we have in the world today, guys, is we have fearful preachers. Just like you have in, in Jeremiah's day, you had these preachers that were fearful preachers. Look back in chapter 29 with me, and we'll, we'll kind of uh, 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 relate to, verse, uh, to chapter 27 in just a minute. But look in chapter 29. Look what the Lord said here. In verses 8 and 9, through his prophet Jeremiah, he says in verse 8, he says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets. Now, if you underscore in your Bibles, if you make any mark, I want you to circle your prophets, or the word you are there. Or your diviners that be in the midst of you to see, uh, deceive you, neither, there, uh, uh, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Now guys, this is a direct uh, statement where the Lord said in verse 27, Therefore hearken not, or in chapter 27, verse 9 and 10. Therefore hearken not to your prophets, nor your viners, nor your dreamers, nor your enchanters, nor your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far hence from the land. Too many men today have forsaken the word of God solely because they're afraid of what is next. People's foundation has not been set secure in the word of God. And they're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And they do this because because 
They're looking at what's going around in the horizontal today, and they're going, oh my goodness, we must be in the middle of the tribulation. We must be in the first year. This plague, and man, these signs in the skies. Listen, guys, signs and wonders and speaking in tongues, so-called tongues, that's not for us today. And there never was an instance in all of the historical scripture where gibberish or a heavenly language is speaking in tongues. You know what the gift of tongues is? Is having the ability to translate and know multiple languages. Everywhere in the Holy Scripture, the word tongues is referring to a language, not gibberish. I'm saying all that today. There's too many men today that are forsaking the Word of God solely because they're afraid of what is next. And guys, can I say this to you this morning? And I really don't mean to be aggressive with this, but the bottom line is the end of 2020 means absolutely nothing. I've heard so many people say, I cannot wait till this year's over with. So for what? For all we know, 2021 is going to be worse. Amen. We have no idea what the next year holds. We do know one thing for sure. My God, your savior is still on the throne today. And just like when Israel was taken captive uh, in this time here, just like what happened in 586 BC, just like when Jeremiah was preaching and writing these letters, telling people what they need to do to seek peace, find peace, live your life, amen, build houses, live in them, plant gardens, eat the food, marry and have kids and grandkids, do all of these things that you've always done despite of what is going on around you. It's the same thing we should be doing today. Preachers are preaching a doctrine out of fear today. Well, I don't know what's going to happen next. Neither do I, and nor do I care. Amen. I know what God has given me today, and that's all I need to be concerned about. It's what I can do for others, what I can do for you, what I can do for this community, what I can do for this valley through the power and might of the Holy Spirit of God, and let the rest settle itself. Amen to that today, preacher. They've clouded the judgments of their congregations and believe in lie upon lie for seeking signs, speaking the so-called tongues, even the atrocity of infant baptism. All of these pagan doctrines and false doctrines that we've seen develop over the last 2,000 years of the church age, every one of them were born out of desperation. From the development of the Catholic Church in the 4th century and the false and pagan doctrines that they teach, to the development even of the Anglican and the Church of England, the Church of Wales, which is, only, which is just a Catholic church, a kissing cousin. From that pagan doctrine for not believing in eternal security, having so-called men in the pulpit who don't even believe uh, that you know where you're going to go when you die, amen. Oh, so get yourself an AV 1611. That tells you where you're going when you die if you're a saved, born-again believer, and it tells you where you're not going, amen, as well. But the reality is we need to remember that God's still on the throne, man. And in the midst of what's going on around, in the midst of the pubs being closed and, and the, uh, the, the issues at the grocery stores and, and, and all the changes that we've had in this past year, God is still on the throne, man. Live our life, praise God. Witness to people. Tell them about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them of the salvation that is there. Plead with them that they may be pulled out of the depths of hell, amen. But I'm trying to share with you today, we've got to live, praise God, and get out from underneath the shadow. Of all the fear mongers in this world, yes, my soul, wear a mask, okay. Yes, clean your hands. Yes, practice safe distancing, but don't live your life in a hole in the darkness of depression. Live, live, live as God told Israel in the midst of captivity. Let's live for him today, amen. In chapter 29, Jeremiah encourages his people to live their lives while they're in exile, mind you. None of you have lost your home and taken to another country that you knew not. None of you have been dragged out of a place and, and placed somewhere that didn't even speak your languages, that did not even have your traditions, that don't, you don't understand their culture, that maybe even drive on the other side of the road. Joke in there, amen. We, we haven't gone through those things. Our life has just been interrupted a little bit. I'm not making light of it, guys. Yeah, it's a problem. It's a common worldwide problem. And in certain areas, it's mighty. It's much more worse than it is here. But my soul, if God can tell the Israelites to live their lives, to work, to marry, to plant, to eat, to multiply in the midst of exile, we can do the same thing. 
So in the midst of days where there are false prophets, in the midst of times where there are fearful preachers, beloved, you know what you and I have to be today? We have to be a faithful people. A faithful people. Look there, if you will, in Jeremiah chapter 29 with me. Jeremiah chapter 29. I wanted to read a few verses. We're going to skip around. Jeremiah 29. Look at verses 4 through 7 with me real quick. Jeremiah 4 through 29, verses 4 through 7. He says, Thus saith the Lord of the hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, not to those that are sitting in high penthouses. He says, Whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem and to Babylon. He says, Build ye houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and begat sons and daughters. And he goes, Take your wives up, up for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters, that uh, ye may be increased there and not diminished, and seek the peace of the city whether I have caused you to be carried away captives. Pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall you have peace. Amen. In verses 10 and 11, we've read multiple times, but God gives them assurance here, the same prophecy that Daniel adheres to in his writings and saying here in chapter 10, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. My friend, he tells them that they will be in Babylon for 70 years and then they will be brought home again. We don't understand God's plans at all. But God's plans of hope and future for his chosen people probably did not match what their idea was going to be. Amen? They wanted to go home. And yet God said, it's going to be 70 years. They wanted their own king. And yet God says, nope, you're going to serve a Babylonian king. They wanted to flourish in their homeland. But God said, nope, you're going to do it under a government while you're being held captive. Guys, possibly the hardest thing was the older generation. And never go back home. They'd never see their homeland again. They'd never go back to their houses that they were maybe born and married in and raised children and grandchildren in. They would never see that land again. They would die in a foreign land serving a foreign king. My friend, we cannot insist our idea of a bright and hopeful future. We can't insist on it if it's outside of God's plan. We tend to be short-sighted and we tend to be earthly-minded. We tend to look at the horizontal, at what is going on around us, rather than taking our eyes as we close this theme and put it on Jesus Christ. I made a statement I know in the, in the onset today, and I know time is running out, guys, this morning, but, but I'm going to tell you, I made a statement earlier today that I said that, that, that if you look back and, and with all dread and you've learned nothing and you're worse now than you were in the beginning of the year, you've missed the point, and I still say that yet again perfect theme for this year, for a perfect year. How in the world is it perfect, preacher, with everything that's going on? Because it should have forced you to get your eyes on Jesus Christ. If you want to find happiness and peace, if they're going to find peace in the city, it said, in the captivity today, they're going to have to look to God. They're going to have to ask God for it, as he says. And if we're going to have peace in the backside all that's happened in the midst of this uh, restrictions, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of all the things that are going on around us, and sad as they are, we're going to have to have our eyes on Christ and not the world. We can't just insist a bright and hopeful feature in our life when God says, listen, this is what I'm allowing into the world today. You need to focus on me and not your surroundings. God's ways are always much higher than our ways. They're always much higher than, than our minds can grasp. His plans are always going to be better, though. It will include forever with him in heaven. And we understand that. It's not just a short person, portion of our life here on earth. The, the ultimate goal, the ultimate gift, the ultimate thing that we look for is Christ on high. Christ coming to blessed hope from up north, coming through the sky, descending in the clouds and calling us home. Praise God. But during this time... What I'm going to challenge you today is ignore the false prophets. Ignore the fearful preachers who are trying to stir up the people to follow them, to drag them away from where the Lord wants them. Let's just be a faithful people to the Lord. 
let's stick to the biblical doctrines that we know to be true, the foundations of our faith. The Bible as our sole authority, amen. The, the, uh, guys, the inspiration of the word of God, the priesthood of the believers, the two offices, the two ordinances, baptism, saved, born again believers in Christ today. The autonomy of the local church. Let us hold these truths. Dispensational truth, the pre-tribulation rapture. Salvation by grace through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Let us today seek peace in the midst of problems in a pandemic. Let us be a faithful people. I'm going to close with this. Let us eliminate the hope so mentality. Let's, praise it, let's replace the hope so mentality with a no so mindset. I know God's on the throne. I know God's going to either lead us through this one way or another. We're either going to come through this storm this way or that way. Amen? Our hope should never be tethered to conveniences and pleasures of this world. I mentioned those sorcerers earlier, that pharmacaea. See, we have a tendency to flee to that GP so he can write that prescription to settle our, e our nerves. Young people in our community today, guys, they're trying to avoid the problems of life or what they call problems of life, most of which they brought on themselves by smoking dope, taking drugs, making stuff they've concocted, pulled out of the weeds or whatever. Listen, that's, they're looking for an out. God says, seek peace in the city. Seek peace in the situation. Seek peace in the circumstances you are, but it's not to be on something just to level out your mindset. We need to fasten our minds to the promises and the truth that's in the word of God. We need to fix our sights on the day when the bright and glorious eternal future will become reality. Instead of wishing away our days in the predicaments that we're in. Oh, I can't wait till this year's over. Man, don't rush the days. Don't rush the days. Learn every, get, let me tell you, get every drop that you can out of 2020. Because there's a load to learn from. Let us have confidence that God's going to put his hope in us, no matter what we're facing. But we need to seek peace in the city of our captivity, if you will. And I say that very loosely. We need to seek peace in the middle of our circumstances. We need to seek peace with God, no matter the situation at hand. No matter what the neighbors may do, no matter what another preacher may say, no matter what another church may do, we need to seek peace through the precious word of God. Be a faithful people and let's seek peace. Will you bow your heads this morning? Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've done, for who and what you are. We pray now, Lord, that you would take this message, Lord, write it upon the table of our hearts. Lord, we ask of you, Lord God, to bear witness upon our souls. Give us God its grace and mercy. Forgive us of where we have failed you. And we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen.